Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. I hope you're all doing good. I'm going to kick things off this week with a pedal review. So recently, this company called Donner Effects, they got in touch with me and very kindly offered to send me two pedals, which I'm going to be reviewing on this channel. And the first of which is this right here, which is the Donner Dynamic Wah. This is an analog envelope filter. They also sent me this, which is called the Echo Square. It's a multi-function delay pedal. So I'm gonna be reviewing this as well um, within the next couple of weeks, but for now, I'm just gonna focus on this. So the Dynamic Watt, as I already mentioned, it's an analog envelope filter. It's true bypass, analog circuitry, and it comes in a miniature metal casing. So it's practically sized, so if you're someone who uses a pedal board and is looking to free up space on your board, then MIDI pedals are obviously a great option. And this one, despite it being very affordable, I think it's about £33 on Amazon the last time I checked, which I guess is roughly $50 to $60. Although it's very affordable, it comes in a metal casing, so it doesn't feel like it's gonna break anytime soon, which is obviously great. And as already mentioned, it's true bypass and analog circuitry. So you're kind of getting the features and hopefully durability of a high-end pedal, but in a compact housing at a more affordable price. So now I'll take a bit of time to talk about the features of this pedal. So you've got four controls to play around with. Range, sensitivity, resonance, and decay. So the range control, this controls the frequency range. So when you have it on a low setting, if you have it down here, you're going to get a lot of low end frequencies and you're going to have to pick quite hard to bring out more high end frequencies. When you have it turned up, it's the opposite. You get a lot of high end and you have to pick quite soft to get more low end. So I like to set it roughly in the middle, maybe about 10 or 11 o'clock. And here is my clean sound without the pedal engaged. I'm using a Strat with vintage output single coils. Um, later on, I'll plug in my Les Paul so you can hear it with humbuckers. So here is the middle pickup. Here's the pedal engaged. Okay, now let's turn the range down. You can hear there's less high end there, more low end, so I have to pick harder to get the high end. And let's turn that all the way up. Okay, so you can really hear that that's quite a lot of high end, much more than I would want to use. So let's dial that back a bit. Okay, so now that's the range control covered, let's look at sensitivity. So here's what it sounds like when it's at 12 o'clock. So to me, that sounds and feels like the higher you set the sensitivity, the more responsive it is to your playing dynamics. 
So when I have it set high and I pick hard, it's really going to respond to that. And when I have it set low, it's kind of unusable on a low setting, to be honest. It, to me, it sounds like when you have a wah pedal on and leave it kicked back. Okay, and resonance, this controls the sharpness of the filter. So when you have the resonance cranked, the high end um, is going to sound really trebly, for example. Let's turn that up about three quarters. And that compared to when it's on a low setting. So you can hear there on the low setting, the high end is quite tamed. It's not over the top. When you have it quite high though, the high end is going to cut through a lot more. Let's dial that back to the middle again. And decay, the last control that we're going to cover, that basically controls the speed at which the high end frequency clamps down after you have picked the note. So when you have the decay on a low setting, you're going to find that notes are going to sustain for much longer and then they'll cut off. And by cut off, I mean that the high frequency will drop down to a low frequency. When you have it set quite high, the notes are only going to sustain for a short amount of time and then they're going to cut off. So let's hear an example of that. I think it's better demonstrated on a lead sound. So here's like a high gain tone. So if I do a big screaming bend like this, you can hear that the note sustains and then it drops off. So that's on a fairly low setting now. That's crank up the decay and listen to how fast the note drops off. So if you're going to be using this pedal for a lead sound, maybe you'd want to use this instead of a traditional wah pedal. If you're going to be doing that and you're going to be doing a lot of long sustained bends, it's probably best to set the decay quite low so that you can let those notes ring out. Okay, so that's all of the controls covered. Now let's switch over to a humbucker fitted guitar. So I'm gonna use my Les Paul. Just give me two seconds. So because of the output difference between the pickups on this and the pickups on my Strat, I am gonna to have to tweak these settings a bit to get it to sound more envelope filter like. Okay, so here's a clean sound. Bye. <laughs> 
Okay, let's move on to an overdriven sound. So you can hear that it took a bit of tweaking there to get it to sound more like a filter pedal because when I had the sensitivity around 12 o'clock there with these with the output of these humbuckers it just kind of sounded like one frequency range there wasn't a lot of um, low end versus high end but when you have the sensitivity on a lower setting then you get a more even balance of high end and low end. So that instantly sounds more wah like to my ears. Okay, so that about does it for this demo slash review of the Donner Dynamic Wah. I think that considering the price of this pedal, you can't really go wrong with it. There are a couple of things that I would do differently on this pedal. I wouldn't have, for start, this traditional clicking um, switch because that is quite loud. And a lot of pedals these days have silent foot switches, which is a huge benefit for live use because if you're playing a quiet song, you don't want to hear this in the middle of it. And as well as that, um, the decay control, although it does technically work, I would prefer it if when you had it on a low setting, the decay slowed down. Because when you have it on a low setting, what I hear is the note sustains for longer and then the cutoff is just as quick as it is on a high setting. So when you have it on a high setting, the note sustains for less and then the decay comes in at the same speed as it does when it's on a low setting, if that makes sense. Those are the two things I would change about this pedal if I could, but like I said, this is a very affordable pedal, so I can't really complain about it too much. It does what it says on the tin, and you can get some good sounds out of it. So I would use this if I was gonna build like a mini pedal board of lots of different miniature pedals, and um, I would recommend it for that, um, for its compact size and usable sounds. So that does it for today's video guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. Go and check out Donner Effects online on their website. I'll put a link to that in the description. And if you want to stay updated with the content that I'm releasing on my channel, please click that subscribe button below and I'll see you in the next one.